Nearly a decade ago, a man's fantasy became reality in a form never seen before, Kitchen Stadium, a giant cooking arena. The motivation for spending his fortune to create Kitchen Stadium was to encounter new original cuisines, which could be called true artistic creations. Out of cuisine! To realize his dream, he started choosing the top chefs of various styles of cooking. And he named his men the Iron Chefs, the invincible men of culinary skills. Iron Chef Japanese is Roksaburo Michiba. Iron Chef French is Hiroyuki Sakai. Iron Chef Chinese is Chen Kenichi. And Masahiko Kobe is Iron Chef Italian. Kitchen Stadium is the arena where iron chefs await the challenges of master chefs from all over the world. Both the iron chef and challenger have one hour to tackle the theme ingredient of the day, using all their senses, skills, creativity, there to prepare artistic dishes never tasted before. And if ever a challenger wins over the iron chef, he or she will gain the people's ovation and fame forever. Every battle, reputations are on the line in Kitchen Stadium, where master chefs pit their artistic creations against each other. What inspiration will today's challenger bring? And how will the Iron Chef fight back? The heat will be on! If my memory serves me correctly, the knives that Japanese chefs use are usually around eight inches long. To my surprise, however, I have found a man who uses a knife almost twice that size. In fact, a chef who works with the longest cooking knife in Japan. The food that is sliced up by his incredible blade is given another life, as it were, for formal dining at tea ceremonies. His skillful use of the blade reminds me of a sword-wielding character in a famous samurai novel. And this is the man who we have as our challenger today. So now let's introduce him, the chef who handles the longest knife in Japan, head chef of Mita, his name Takashi Mera. This man's career tells me he is no ordinary chef, it began at age 17. His father was totally opposed to such a career, but Mera started his apprenticeship anyway, despite it all. And at 29 he joined Kakiden, a famous place for tea ceremony dining. Kakiden is often talked about as comparable to the great Kicho restaurant. Mera absorbed the essence of tea ceremony dining and picked up all the secrets a chef needs to know. And after serving as head chef at Iseicho, he was scouted to head the kitchen of Mita. This Mita restaurant also qualifies for special mention. It is a place where people of high rank flock together. For example, most of the past prime ministers of Japan have been fans. It was at the age of 37 that he first picked up his long knife. He liked the stability, balance and weight and its outstanding sharpness. You've got to be good to use it. I feel proud using it. No one else can. Mera's creations are always on the royal road of traditional or formal Japanese dining styles. I have confidence in everything. I won't serve something if I'm not confident. And boldly enough, he has selected a particular Iron Chef to battle. That is, his senior in Japanese cooking, Rokusaburo Michiba. And the reason he chose Michiba is that he doesn't approve of Michiba's use of truffles, foie gras, and other foreign embellishments in Japanese dishes. Japanese food has to use Japanese ingredients. That's all. The man younger than me is bound by the traditions of Japanese cooking. I feel sad when I see a man like this. Well, a younger man with a longer sword planning a coup against my Iron Chef. We have a samurai duel today. Now, Mera, show us your blade work and do justice to what you have just stated. The knives are out. I'll show you what I mean.
tense atmosphere here today for what appears to be a grudge match brewing. And our guest, let's welcome her, actress Mayuko Takata. Nice to have nice you. Nice to be here. Takata-san, you're aware of the restaurant Mita, the challenger's place, uh, frequented by many political leaders and the like. Um, I'm sure your father's been there quite often. Well, my father's not a politician or anything. <laughs> I know, just kidding. And also with us today, Dr. Yukio Hattori. Always a pleasure. All right, it's time now. Let's bring him on, Chairman Kaga. All right, the man who uses the longest knife in all of the kitchens across the country, marching in, knife in hand, almost like a modern day samurai warrior set for battle. My pleasure to be here. Yes. あ、いえいえ、結構です。対決が始まってからお思い切り振り回してください。オッケー。それでは例によって我がビショクアカデミーが誇る3人の鉄人を登場させましょう。よみがえるなり、アリアンシェ。Ascending into Kitchen Stadium, your Iron Chefs. Iron Chef Chinese, Chen Kenichi. Iron Chef French, Hiroyuki Sakai. And Iron Chef Japanese, Roksaburo Michiba. Here they stand, the invincible men of culinary skills. Michiba-san is the one. Yes, sir, Michiba, the target of Challenger Mera. Iron Chef Japanese Roksaburo Michiba. He's achieved maestro status in the country's most prestigious chef's association and continually searches for new ways to expand Japanese cuisine. But today, challenged by a dangerous chef looking to chop him down to size. ヤマを張っている。いかがですかそれでは発表しましょう。今日のテーマはハモにあらず。これです。Tuna. If my memory serves me correctly, the fishmongers at Tsukiji Fish Market have a saying about how to enjoy it best, and that is, cook it on your tongue. This means when eating it raw, as of course we often do here in Japan, you let the tuna melt on your tongue. Why? Well, because the fat of the tuna is its best element. Different from animal fat, it melts at a very low temperature, spreading a wonderful flavor all around one's mouth. Let me repeat, to enjoy tuna, cook it on your tongue. We've got a well-armed challenger who uses the longest knife of any chef in the country, Challenger Mera, a follower of the traditional in Japanese cuisine, as opposed to Iron Chef Michiba's groundbreaking tendencies, a cook-off version of a samurai battle about to take place. With tuna as the theme, we are set. Let's get it on! Out of 
Bang a gong, we are on and set up for another great battle today. Same cuisine, Japanese, philosophical differences. And there, look at that. Meta walking up the stairs as his assistant has gotten a hold of the head and that is being carted off to their side of the kitchen. So wow. then Meta got the head, right? Oh, oh, sorry about that. That's the Iron Chef's assistant who oh, got it. Oh, yeah, you're right. That is Michiba-san. Michiba okay. having his assistant go up there and get it. Now, speaking of the tuna, this one right here that you see, right? it's probably around 60 or 70 kilos or 150 pounds. And the meat of this tuna that we're seeing here today all together probably run up a tab of about uh, $10,000. Unbelievable, and Michiba working yeah. on the tuna head there. I think he's going for the cheek meat here. Meat of the cheek. And the eyeball. Fukuzan! Oh, From the floor, Shinichiro Ota, go! Yeah, right after the ingredient was announced, Challenger Meta told his assistants to run right up and get the only head that was available. Unfortunately, Iron Chef Michiba had also told his assistants to do the exact same thing, and they got to it first. Back Both to you. Both sides mm -hmm. there. Yeah, going Both after chefs it. <laughs> wanting to have exclusive possession of it. But uh, not wanting to appear unseemly about it, having their assistants scramble up there and try and get it. Now look, the challenger is borrowing a page from Michiba right here. <laughs> yeah, Michiba's running a little late on his. Michiba, uh, not the first one with the menu. And uh, what does that first dish say there? Is uh, that tuna sushi it's roll? Grilled tuna sushi. Yes. Yeah. yeah. His calligraphy is too good for me to read. <laughs> he's, he's very good, isn't he? It's beautiful. Oh boy. Oh, there we go. The eyeballs. <laughs> now, actually, you know, the back of the eyes are very tasty. The fat contains a lot of DHA, which is an acid that's said to keep your brain young. Heard that before. And, yeah, fish normally contain a lot of that. It's a, a gourmet item. Okay, okay, we'll see how he prepares the eyeballs. Now, it's a very tricky thing to do. Normally, you have to grill it well to get rid of the smell. You cook them. Yeah. So like a sunny side up? <laughs> <laughs> You've taken that from the, the Japanese name of a fried egg, but not quite. All so. right, here he goes. He's unsheathed his knife. Oh, oh wow. The longest <laughs> knife used by any chef in the country. That's wow. too long. <laughs> yeah, wow. Looks like a sword. Look you at that. You are right. And, you know, historically, cooking knives are a shortened version of a sword, right? I've never seen anything mm. like this. No. It's custom made, too. Oh, it has to be, sure. Wouldn't find that one in stock. <laughs> no. And he's got a block of uh, tuna fillet here. It's a huge block. And now he's going to slice some of it out, like little smaller kind of brick portions. Okay. Huh. And that knife appears to be very sharp, too. Oh, yeah. And it, let me explain the parts here. The, the pale pink part to the front is otoro, which is the fattiest part. Mm -hmm. All right. And in the middle, slightly pink, is chutoro. And the part he took right now, that's uh, the red stuff, is called akami. Okay, and here on the replay, ooh, with some flair, too. <laughs> yeah. Flipping the knife around and flare cutting below. and wow. muscle. And you notice him changing the direction of the blade. Oh. He's very good. He's a chef equivalent to the samurai character Sasaki Kojiro, who had the longest sword in history. Ah. Uh, <laughs> he did it again. Oh, oh, wow. This, <laughs> this isn't the usual way, right? <laughs> well, it's a huge knife, so it's probably actually easier to do it this way. Well, is there any significance in rotating the knife like this? Well, you try not to damage the um, the meat, and wow. Hey, <laughs> what a twirl wow. there. Yeah, he's doing this just for the camera. Hey, I'd, I'd have to give him a 10. <laughs> he's just performing. <laughs> yeah, he's smiling. And here it is again. Check it out. Ah. Ooh, pretty slick right there. Wow. <laughs> he's a showman. Like I said, he's smiling. So. Yeah. That's now, <laughs> can he cook? Well, that's what we've got to find out. <laughs> All right, back to the Iron Chef here. Ooh. Okay, now I think we mentioned he'll probably grill this. Grilled eyeball. Hmm. <laughs> Menu item. Can we call it something else? How about barbecued eyeball? Yeah, that sounds better, okay. But the soft pieces around the eyes really are tasty, though. Yeah, it's almost like a jelly. Yeah, and now the challenger wanted the head too, right? Absolutely. Kuzan? Yes. Yeah, I asked the challenger if not getting the head had forced him to change his plans, and he said, well, tuna is a typical Japanese ingredient, so I can shift gears. And then I said, I bet you were guessing that the theme ingredient was going to be pike eel, weren't you? And he just started to laugh, haha, and dodged my question. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thanks, Ota. And there in the royal box, Fukuji Meta, the challenger's father. Looks a little bit worried. Does look a yeah. little concerned there. And now Michiba finally getting on to writing his menu and... Uh, and what do you uh, have for those? Grilled skin. Grilling the skin and also citrus and soy. And and radish as well, yeah. And that's traditional. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah, mm -hmm. it should be very nice. Now here's Meta, another variation of blade work. Okay, and oh, he'll be making a carpaccio. Okay, Meta carpaccio. with that? Uh, no, that's the Iron Chef will be doing that. That should be very nice. Okay, yes, the Iron Chef tuna carpaccio. Yeah, that'll be great in Italian style. Mm, Italian dish, right. All right, now check this out. Rapid fire action really mm. giving us oh. a show. Yeah. This time, though, with the shorter blade. Now, the tuna and leek mixed together is called negitoro. He'll mix those. Right. 
and Meta working incredibly fast, mm. good pace over there, while the Iron Chef is still riding. Now here he's got uh, sushi. Uh, hand molded sushi, yeah. Wrapped in persimmon leaves. Right, right. Sounds interesting. And from the menu there, one, two, three, four, five, mm, six dishes. Yeah. And oh. here eyeballing this one. <laughs> got the eyeballs, yeah. Broiled eyeballs, tuna eyeballs. A little check of them and back in and now back with Meta. And looks like eggplant, I think. 15 minutes gone. Okay, he'll be charbroiling this one. Okay, driving the skewers through. Yeah, and he was preparing some miso before, I believe. Yes, so yes. that'll be a typical Japanese country style dish. Uh -huh, Dengaku style. All right, now back with Michiba and this here. The skin? skin? Yeah, the skin of the belly. Okay, a lot of people like this part too. It has a lot of fat on it. Very actually. flavorful mm. with the fat mm -hmm. content. Now ameda has got his eggplant skewers headed to the oven there. Now, I'm not sure, but my guess is he'll be using this later on with. Um, Help me. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, we'll get back to that. Now Michiba here, double-barreled wow, action. He's that. got a long <laughs> knife, nice, too. Yeah. Maybe his attempt at Musashi, the greatest sword fighter in history. Yes, go ahead. Yeah, I asked Michiba-san what he thinks about the challenger and his use of that long knife, and he said, yeah, it kind of looks like a sword you'd hear about in that famous samurai novel. But you know what? In that story, the guy with the longer sword loses, so I'll take that as a good sign that, in fact, I will win this thing. <laughs> <laughs> Guaranteed <you> victory. <laughs> See what Meta says about that. He's broken out the Yuba skins, though. Yuba, right? For a wrap or roll job? Yeah, I'd say roll, roll it. And this is roll. the fat laden stuff here? Yeah, it's either um, Otoro or Chutoro. I'm, I'm guessing Chutoro. Okay, Chutoro, that would be the moderately fatty one. And you'll notice the Iron Chef is adding pine nuts here. Mm. Yes, pine nuts added to the tuna. Yeah, it mixed in there. And you know, the aroma Steam. of the pine nuts when grilled or braised is going to be very, very nice. Mm -hmm. All right, and what's that in front? Scallions, what's that? leeks, Japanese ginger. Oh, ginger, yeah. Okay, okay ginger, ginger and pine nuts mixed into a tuna mulch. That's what the Iron All Chef is doing together. right here. Yeah. So this is a very complex dish in a, in a nice way, uh, with Japanese ginger and the texture of the pine nuts together. Mm -hmm. All right. So. Wow. Oh, look. Okay. Look at that. Oh, the eyeballs. Ooh. They've gotten a bit of a browning <laughs> treatment there. Can you say nice looking, at least color wise? <laughs> but uh, you don't serve this as is, do you? Well, yeah, we've got to think of the number of people to be served. You, right, know? you can't yes. just put them in the middle and blow a whistle. <laughs> <here>. <laughs> yes, go ahead. Challenger Meta overheard Iron Chef Michiba referring to that samurai story and declaring a win, and he came back with, hey, we're living in modern times. This ain't no fairy tale. I'm not going to let him win that easily. Just wait, I'll show you a happy ending. <laughs> All right, both sides getting into the verbal jousting. Yeah, but, you know, he's smiling when he heard that. He's smiling. Fukuzan? Yes, go ahead. Challenger Meta overheard Iron Chef Michiba referring to the samurai story and declaring a win, and he came back with, hey, we're living in modern times. This ain't no fairy tale. I'm not going to let him win that easily. Just wait, I'll show you a happy ending. <laughs> <laughs> All right, both sides getting into the verbal jousting here. Yeah, but he was smiling when he heard that. He was smiling, you know. <laughs> All right, uh, gentle barbs, we'll call them so right, far. Right, right, right. <laughs> both sides taking uh, somewhat of a high road in their comments about each other. And now, meta, rice out of the steamer, into the mixing bowl there, and some vinegar on that side, so I believe they're going to be making rice for sushi. I think that would be a good guess. Well, let's see. What's he, what's he got here? Soy sauce? Soy. Oh, it is soy. Okay. Okay. No, what, uh, well, let's see. It says here, light soy sauce. Hmm. And uh, a dash salt. of salt. Some salt, yeah. Sesame seeds. Yeah, you're there right. There you go. Yeah. Okay. Checking it out there. Rice, maybe? Maybe? Well, what, the soy in there for what? A touch uh, of aroma? I think so, yeah. Okay, and so no vinegar is in this. Not yet. that we saw, no. All right, now no, take a look. Check this out here. Sushi hmm. style. He's going to roll. Yeah. Oh, okay, so maybe the Yuba rolled tuna with rice. Could be. Oh, okay. Okay. okay, okay, I see. Well, he's. Well, he had, he was thinking about it, the seaweed sheet, he's put it down, looks like he's rethinking, and now back with the Iron Chef. And what's the herb there? Uh, scallions, I think. Smaller type. Right, yeah. Okay, so minced scallions in the ring mold, that was for the carpaccio. Carpaccio, yeah. Okay, now back to Meta, and yes, rice added to the dried seaweed sheet for sushi of some type, 30 minutes gone, and not using the Yuba roll. Mm -mm. No, thought he was going to, but not So not just so. a simple tuna and scallions roll. I guess it's gotta be, Negi yeah. Toto, straight ahead approach, tuna scallions, and there are some beefsteak leaves. Yep. 
very conventional approach, looking to have at least one dish yeah, like that. Yeah, maybe in contrast to his other courses, right? Maybe the Cousin. idea there, yes. Yeah, I'm still having a hard time making out what the challenger has written on his menu, but I can tell you that I'm quite sure there are five dishes listed. All right, thanks, mm. Ota. Challenger Meta planning to have five, while the Iron Chef looking to have six dishes. At least that's what he had on his original menu. Mara's writing is just too good to read, it's like actually. like calligraphy <laughs> from hundreds of years ago. <laughs> right. All right, in the last couple of minutes, Michiba's picked up the pace, and now they are frying, deep frying on their oh, side. Oh, it's just plain old tuna. Just Look as at it that. Is. Wow. Now, this is the most expensive part, too. Long, big piece there, this too. This is very bold. Never seen anything like this. Uh uh, me neither. Now, he could be slicing this after taking it out, but it's going to taste great, though. It better. Think of the cost. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a slightly charbroiled sashimi, actually, oh, in the effect. Oh, Toto getting a hot oil bath. And won't this mess up the flavor, though? Well, I wouldn't do it myself. Wouldn't but... <laughs> want to ch take a chance wasting this. I think it will be quite good, actually. It'll remove the fishy smell Look, completely. Like too. a tataki. Uh -huh. Yeah, this will be great. Inside, still rare, mm. raw. It's just like Bonito, the tataki-style sashimi. Yeah, but that one's charbroiled, just the surface. You know? Right. Yes, right. over charcoal. This yeah. one is deep-fried, yeah. lightly yeah. deep-fried. the tuna should go well with oil. It'll go very well, yeah. Okay, meantime, meta has been busy. Look, some deep frying oh, okay. of his own. Oh, see, he's frying it, okay. Uh, now using the cured plum sauce. Right, yeah. And mixed in the batter. Oh, okay. on. Yes. Yes, I'd like to go back to that deep fry uh, just for a minute, if I could. The challenger has battered the rolled sushi with a batter mixed in with the, uh, sorry, let me uh, re rephrase that. Using a batter containing a mix of flour, water, and cured plum sauce, as said, back to you. Okay, mm, all right. Sounds Incredible. really nice. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, we so, saw him making the rolled sushi, right? Yeah, and the whole rolls are battered and fried, and it's pink. It's nice pink. Nice light <laughs> pink there. But isn't there rice in the center of it? Yes, there is, yeah. Well, it ain't conventional anymore. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. You know, but this reminds me of an Italian-style rice ball with the rice inside. Yeah, with the cheese uh, mixed in, Exactly, right? yeah. exactly. So Something like that, maybe. All right, but I have no idea what this would taste like. Now, we've got the Iron Chef doing something interesting here. Mm, very pretty. Is he going to grill this, do you think? Um, not sure yet. It's okay. going to be cooked, though, yeah. Making some slits into it about mm -hmm. halfway through. Okay, right. well, let me, I can explain this one. Ah, oh, it's going to open up nicely after exactly. he grills it. Exactly, <laughs> okay. right after cooking, yeah. And after if he grills it, he'll be using uh, skewers. And if so, what about uh, maybe a teriyaki flavor, perhaps? Uh, not sure at this point. Okay, now back to Challenger Meta. And it looks like he's preparing a couple more of the Negi Total rolls over there on his side. Oh, Check wow, it look out. look at that. <laughs> Michiba, a little fuel-fired flame action there with that tuna in pan. And that smells so nice. Mm, yes. And what cut of tuna is this? I think it must be the cheek meat. Ah, yes. And he's using, like, just the best parts only. Like, this is a true gourmet item. All right. Mm -hmm. And a little oil there really sparked it. Check that out. Okay, did he add sweet cooking sake there? Yes, he did, meeting. Okay, so it'll be just a touch of sweetness as well. Yes, soy sauce and sweet cooking sake added. Okay, oh, did, okay you saw that? No. I what? told you the challenger was going to do this. Now, what is this? This is diced tuna and okra cut up and yes. look. okra, dipping it in the miso. Yeah, and I think some sea urchin added okay. as well. Okay, on top of the eggplant, dengaku style with tuna and even sea urchin row toppings. Oh, that's <laughs> amazing. <laughs> Dynamic <laughs> duo. Yeah. Yes. And a nice smell from Michiba Sansai. <laughs> that shot locked in on it. That's the tuna cheek meat now wow. removed from the frying pan, the yes, one that was fire. fired up. Now we can check out the challenger here. This is a reverse style sushi roll. It's inside out. Okay, a reverse play. Negi Toto rolls with the rice rolled outside the seaweed. You sometimes see the sushi chefs doing that. Yes, mm -hmm. that's true. Yep. All right, now the iron chef working with his rice. This must be the vinegared rice now. Oh, right. He did have one sushi item on the list. He had right? one sushi item. Yeah, I remember he did. Yes, I remember that too. All right. <laughs> and the okay, challenger, the challenger here, let's yeah. get back over there. Someone said that they saw some rice in the oven. Yes, there is rice in there. Okay, right. kind of like grilled rice balls. I guess so. Well, not quite in a ball shape yet, though. Well, then grilled what? Well, you know, yaki onigiri, like the triangular rice balls. Okay, but it's not a ball. <laughs> <laughs> I think we get the point. We get the picture for Kui san. We do. Okay, okay. Yeah. now, Meta still getting ready to roll another one. Now those are cucumbers. Roll them up. And is that the that's the skin, right? Yeah. Well, you know, he has a lot of rolled things yes, in he his does. menu. He's traded in his knife for a rolling skin here. <laughs> <I guess. laughs> All right, back with Michiba. Oh, he's got his rice. For his sushi, All doing right. the shaping mm -hmm. now. Closer to ball shape over here, it looks like. And this is to be wrapped in persimmon leaves, correct? Exactly. Yeah. All right. And while he's doing that, we'll check in on the challenger. Uh -huh. And uh, what's he got here? Well, he's squeezing it. 
I'm trying to oh, drain yeah. it, I think. Yes, you know, cucumbers have a lot of water in them, so... Looks like the scroll the samurais would have with the, their license to carry swords. <laughs> <laughs> Just looks like a whole cucumber after all. <laughs> it does, doesn't it? It's back to its original size. Yeah, it does. Wow. But filled with something else. Mm. Fukuzan? Yes. Yes, other ingredients wrapped up in these cucumber rolls that the challengers are working on are grated daikon and yuba bean curd. All right, thanks. Okay, so radish and yuba. So? Bean curd. Hmm. So well. where's the tuna then? <laughs> no tuna Something's in there yet. Something's missing here. And hold it, just hold left it. it out. Ah, there's the tuna. Okay, oh, tuna okay. is yeah. inside the Already yuba skin. Wrapped ah, up. Very okay. tricky. Roll right. upon roll. Several uh, rings of flavor and textual okay, components now check there. This the out persimmon here. leaves, right? Okay, but note you don't eat these leaves. They're just for decoration. But I tell you, it does look good, and I love tuna. Go. Boy, I wish I were on the panel today. <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna, uh, oh, well. you know, I can hear your mouth watering over here. We're gonna need a yes, I got it pretty bad. soon. <laughs> now, less than 15 minutes. Iron Chef Michiba taking on the challenge and the knife of Takashi Meta trying to slice and dice his way to a win here. Oh, look at this. A persimmon leaves. Okay, but no, you don't eat these leaves. They're just for decoration. Mm. But I tell you, it all looks so good, and I love tuna. Boy, I wish I were on the tasting panel again today. <laughs> I can hear your mouth watering over here. We yes. need a bucket pretty soon. I got it bad. Now, less than 15 minutes, Iron Chef Michiba taking on the challenge and the knife of Takashi Meta, trying to slice and dice his way to a win here in Kitchen Stadium. And now he is back on the blade. Diced it nice little squares. Yeah, that'll be for sashimi. Mm -hmm. Dice size chunks of raw tuna and now the Iron Chef throwing some other stuff into a hot pot over there not quite boiling yet okay these are the ones he was making those little slits in uh -huh. okay, okay and so perhaps this is for a broth of some sorts well I think right now it's just plain old hot water Okay, water and now it's beginning to boil and the the pieces were coated uh, yeah, I'm not sure. Well, you know, with that decorative blade work, this could maybe end up in a soup or something. I'm not too sure what he's doing. Here. All right, yes. Yeah, I asked Iron Chef Michiba whether or not he thought he could finish all six dishes in the little time remaining, and he said, who knows? I don't know. Go away. I'll just do what I can. You know, it's rare to see him <laughs> feeling that much pressure. Michiba feeling the heat today, or maybe the slight prick at the tip from the knife, figuratively speaking, of Challenger Mera, who's stepping it up on his side, and he's also pulled out his knife again. Oh, hold it. No, no, no. <laughs> These are his chopsticks. Even they are extra long size. They are. And in on that, a beefsteak leaf. And on top of that, let's see. Okay, cubes of tuna. Man alive, does that look great. Yeah, and these are raw. The moderately fatty stuff. Ten yeah, the chuturo. Okay, chu toto sashimi cubes in bowl with the shiso leaf, beef steak leaf. Doesn't get any simpler than that. No, I think that's going to be it. Now back with Michiba here. Oh, okay, now remember the otoro fried in oil? Yes, and there was some sauce. The tataki style sashimi, right? It almost looks French. Yeah, I really like this color. Mm, it really is quite Western. Yeah. Yes, uh, visually completely French in its presentation mm. here by the Iron Chef. Very much so, yeah. On the other side now, the challenger nearing completion of of this. Ah, uh, the one with the okra. Now, what about this dark stuff in here How that we've zoomed in on? Fukuzan, mm. this yes. is called iwatake. Okay. Oh, iwatake. Which okay. is? Well, it literally translated, it just means uh, rock mushroom. They grow on the cliffs in the mountains, and it's almost like moss, but it's it's edible. It's a type of mushroom. All right, oh. iwatake on that, and now Michiba is done with this one. And this is the skin. Yes, right. Okay. The skin, so that should go with the citrus-flavored soy. Yes, this is a very traditional way to do it. All right, and it was this which went on top of the lemon over there. Yeah, this would be a nice appetizer, so this will be served first. Could go well with the cup of sake. <laughs> it would, yes. <laughs> a nice hors d'oeuvre from the Iron Chef. And now Meta still with more cutting here. Okay, this is a jelly made with uh, kudzu starch. Okay, and where will we go with this one? It goes on top of uh, of uh, the dish that would... There you go, those dishes there. Okay, another dish with a lot of steps to it to bring it Five to fruition. To Five go. minutes left now, and Meta really raising the bar oh, for the Iron lovely. Chef today. Look at oh, that, that is beautiful. a nice touch. Yes! With time running out, I asked the challenger whether he thought he was going to make it on time, and his answer was an emphatic no problemo. All right, got it under control, and all systems go for the last five minutes. Looks like everything's gone according to plan for the challenger today, Takashi Mera. No, over here we got the Iron Chef. Yes. Uh, the oh, okay. Carpaccio. Yeah, the Carpaccio style. Loaded with scallions. And that goes on top of miso sauce, I think. Down into a shallow pool of it. But it can be just plain miso. I'm interested to see what he's mm. done with this. And you know, this is another one by Michiba with a continental look. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Really? 
Really? You know, I get the feeling I'm uh, seeing Sakai in action today. <laughs> this resemble that. Yeah. Okay, now meta and check it out again. Nice. Knife sword in yeah. action. And this is the cucumber roll. Right, you and are. And look at that blade, so shiny and sharp. Just like his performance today, and this one, the cucumber skin. Yeah. Now, if we can get a shot of the Iron Chef, All I right, believe he's let's get using back over some there. caviar now. Yes, there it is. caviar oh, on yes. top, a Western yes, delicacy. Indeed. Take that, Challenger Meta. And what about <laughs> the rice balls? Uh, well, what's <laughs> yeah, the name of this again? What are we calling this? It's, how about grilled rolled rice balls? All right, there uh, you go. Maybe. That'll work. Uh, I don't know. That one sounds too hard to say to me. <laughs> All right, Maida, slicing that one up, and three minutes left now. Okay, it's just what we thought, a soup. Okay, with some water shields in it. Yeah, so he's going to add his special broth, the broth of vigor. Okay, now it. back with the challenger. Uh -huh. Okay, the cured plum sauce. In the this, right? deep fried one, yes. Mm -hmm. But again, he likes those things rolled up, doesn't yes, he? Yes, he does. <laughs> yeah. Everything's circular, you know? Yeah. And now getting it plated oh, right there. Look at oh, that. beautiful. A pair of items to enjoy. Yeah, mm. wow. Oh, wow. One minute to go. All right, a minute to go. The final 60 seconds of an intense 60 minutes of cooking. The tuna battle. Challenger Takashi Meta. He wields the longest knife of any professional chef in Japan, targeting the Iron Chef Japanese. Meta not sharing Michiba's outlook on Japanese cuisine. He adheres to tradition and is relishing this opportunity to lay a chop on the Iron Chef. A great theme ingredient for Japanese cuisine. Tuna, one big one and only one head, which was spirit away immediately after the opening gong by one of Michiba's assistants. We shall see if that becomes a factor in the tasting. Michiba has beaten back the challenges of so many foes, but his opponent today with the resolve, the strength of the steel of his knife. And even his father's disowning of him at one point couldn't shake Meta from pursuing his chosen profession. Both men predicting victory. We shall see how it all shakes out. The final seconds are ticking down in this tuna battle. And yes, that's it. The cooking's done. The tuna battle is over. The hour's gone. The battle's over. How do you feel? Oh, I was tired. Uh-huh. You know, I'm not used to this kitchen, but it was fun. It was a good experience for me. Well done. Well fought. Thanks. How do you feel after such an exciting hour? Ah, just tired. <laughs> you too, huh? <laughs> yeah. Well, on a scale of 1 to 100, how would you rate your dishes today? Eh, uh, let's see. Should be 90. Challenger Meta is offering four dishes. First, tuna sashimi with okra paste. The paste poured over dice-shaped tuna sashimi. The plum-flavored jelly adds a soothing touch. Tuna and cucumber roll with cured plum sauce. Tuna rolled in yuba bean curd resides in the center. Tuna braised on eggplant with miso. He first broiled the eggplant with white miso, then topped it with tuna and sea urchin roe. Last is tuna sushi rolls, two flavors, one grilled, the other fried in a batter containing cured plum sauce. The contrasting textures and flavors show his high caliber. Iron Chef Michiba is offering seven dishes. First, tuna soup. Michiba's trademark broth of vigor adds punch to the boiled tuna meat, finished off in a splendid soup with wasabi. Tuna skin appetizer. The taste of lemon offsets nicely and accentuates the pleasant texture. Tuna carpaccio. Here Michiba adds Chinese hot bean sauce to the miso sauce, a platform which makes this dish truly an original. Grilled tuna cheek meat. Finely ground Japanese pepper kicks up the flavor quotient. Fifth, fried toro sashimi, a crispy surface with ultra rare meat inside, a magnificent way to enjoy top quality tuna. Tuna sushi, Michiba style. The Iron Chef mixed Japanese pepper leaf buds into the tuna and added roasted sesame seeds to this creation. He finishes with salt grilled tuna eyeballs flavored with lemon juice, an eye opening gourmet experience. Precision handling of a steely, cold, and long utensil, the longest knife used by any chef in all of Japan, used by today's challenger, Takashi Mera. He points his knife in the direction of Iron Chef Japanese, Roksaburo Michiba. Chairman Kaga, no, it's not Paikil, unveiling one big tuna, a big fish for a long-bladed challenger. And challenger Meta slices and cooks his way to a well-rounded set of four dishes. Iron Chef Michiba almost doubling the challenger's output with his set of seven. And now, the moment of truth, tasting and judgment for the tuna battle. 
On the panel today are former Lower House member Shinichiro Kurimoto, actress Mayuko Takata, and culinary critic Asako Kishi. First, the dishes of Challenger Mera. Well, the best way to enjoy this is raw, I think. So I, I made it a point not to overcook any of the dishes I prepared. <laughs> yes, yes, I know. It's all connected. <laughs> yeah. You know, this is a bit difficult to eat with chopsticks, but the flavor is wonderful. This would be a great appetizer with sake. The okra is quite strong, isn't it? So it... Yes. It takes a while until I get to the meat. Or maybe I had too much okra. I deliberately flavored the okra strong. Oh, really? Yes. This is cucumber, right? Yes. Well, you ask me, I just love this dish. And, well, the grated radish, it's so cleverly layered. Yeah, I can taste that layering throughout my mouth. It's just wonderful. And the cured plum is great. I love this dish. So good. Yes, I love this. Mm, this is so good. It's hard to believe it's tuna. I can feel the flavor of the tuna, but the texture is so different. It's uh, tender, like meat. This is a very nice dish, but the eggplant is overpowering. Oh, really? Well, the tuna, if I may say, is overpowered by the eggplant. I think this is done just right. This is a great dish in itself, but unless I'm told, I don't recognize it's tuna. And the color is nice, but I think it really needed some more cured plum here. I'm sorry. I'm really so sorry. It's just a layman's personal opinion. Hey, what do I know, right? And now up the dishes of Iron Chef Michiba. Very good. The tuna is just perfect, mm. right? The texture and the flavor, they're just top-notch. But for me, it's just a bit too... a bit too sour, Maybe. I had to say, sorry. I thought it was a little bit too salty. Without the saltiness, the tuna would overpower this. But I hear you, maybe a bit too much. Mmm. 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 How do you describe this? I, I don't know how. There's no Japanese word for this, and I don't have the French word either. <laughs> the miso is where the magic is. Yeah. You, you were adding a lot of things to the miso, right? It has kind of an international flavor. Oh, it's really good. I don't know how to describe it. Very nice. You know, the meat of the cheek is said to have very little fat. I could be... Fooled if you told me that this was chicken. So mild and nice. This is very... I'm sorry. I'm out of words here. It's very good. I know this is very luxurious. Yeah, there's no doubt about that. The sesame seeds are nice in this. And the seaweed, sesame seeds and rice and the tuna match very well. Well, of course I know that, but this is even beyond my knowledge, you know? I don't think you needed the seaweed. What were you thinking? Well, I confess, I was out of time. I wanted to braise it and mix it once more. Here they are, Michiba doing the honors. Excuse me. I'd like a piece of that too. <laughs> Should be awesome. Just superb. Yeah. Delicious. Yeah. Now, I need something with this. I don't drink that much, but I could really go for some sake right now. Keep your eyes on the prize. The verdict is coming when we return. パフォーマンスは挑戦者の勝利。そして味はそれでは発表します。
Quite a while since we've seen a chef come in with the swagger and skills and armed with the longest of cooking knives, Challenger Meta, his handling of the tuna, threatening the Iron Chef's aura of invincibility. But in the end, it comes down to taste. Did Michiba's hold up? Who takes it? Whose cuisine reigns supreme? Michiba, It's the Iron Chef, Michiba, doing it again, rising to the occasion. The experienced yet still explorative Iron Chef overcoming the astonishing effort brought forth by the challenger today. Two samurai warriors battling it out, but victory is Roksaburo Michiba's.